As the tension mounted aboard our flagship, the Defiance, I observed the tactical holographic display with a furrowed brow. The Noans and Morales aren't making any sudden moves, I reported to Admiral Docker, my voice echoing through the command center. They have been stationary for twenty-six hours. We will continue to monitor their movements, sir. I continued my report as Admiral Docker listened intently. By the looks of things, our best guess is they may be waiting for reinforcements to strike again. Their ground forces have been defeated. Only the Noans were captured as the Morales never surrendered and fought to their last man. The intelligence gathered from the Noan interrogations. It would seem possible the Noan fleet could be working out a deal with all known Noan pirates in the nearby systems. The Noan government has offered the pirates contracts as privateers in times of need in the past. Admiral Docker nodded grimly, his gaze fixed on the holographic representation of the enemy fleet. Agreed, he replied, his voice resolute. We can't afford to underestimate them. Get our fighters and interceptors ready for launch. We'll need to maintain a defensive perimeter while we assess the situation and plan our next move. Find out what we can about all known pirates in any nearby systems. With a sense of urgency, I relayed the orders to the crew, knowing that the fate of the Human Alliance fleet rested on our ability to outmaneuver and outsmart our adversaries. As the hours passed, the tension aboard the Defiance remained palpable. Every member of the crew was on high alert, ready to spring into action at a moment's notice. Sir, we've intercepted some encrypted communications between known known pirate factions, I reported to Admiral Docker, my fingers flying across the control panel as I decrypted the data. It looks like they're mobilizing their forces and preparing to join the known fleet on the outer edge of Barnard's star system. Admiral Docker's jaw tightened as he absorbed the information. This complicates things, he muttered, his expression grave. We'll need to adjust our strategy accordingly. Get me a comprehensive analysis of the pirate fleet's strength and capabilities. We need to know what we're up against. With a sense of urgency, I relayed the orders to our intelligence officers, knowing that our ability to gather accurate information would be crucial in determining our next course of action. As we monitored the enemy fleet's movements, tension gripped the command center of our flagship, the Defiance. The addition of sixteen known pirate cruisers to the enemy ranks had significantly increased the threat level, although many of the ships were not military-grade and some were in disrepair. Admiral Docker, the known fleet is growing stronger by the minute, I reported, my voice tinged with concern. They're still biding their time, waiting for more reinforcements to arrive, sir. Admiral Docker nodded, his brow furrowed in deep concentration. Understood, he replied, his voice firm. We need to act swiftly before the enemy gains any more ground. Deploy the Trojans as soon as they're ready. It's our best chance to turn the tide in our favor. With a sense of urgency, I relayed the orders to the engineering team, knowing that the success of our mission hinged on their ability to deploy the Trojans quickly and efficiently. As the minutes ticked by, anticipation hung heavy in the air aboard the Defiance. Finally, the engineering team reported that the Trojans were ready for deployment. Admiral Docker, the Trojans are primed and ready for launch, I announced, relief flooding through me as I relayed the news. We were able to bring four online. We can deploy them at any moment. Admiral Docker nodded, his expression determined. Excellent, he replied. Initiate the deployment sequence. It's time to show the Noan fleet what we're made of. With a sense of purpose, I relayed the orders to the rest of the crew, knowing that the success of our mission relied on the precision and coordination of every member of the Human Alliance fleet. As the tension escalated on the bridge of our flagship, the Defiance... I watched with a mix of anticipation and dread as more ships swelled the ranks of the Noan fleet. With each new arrival, the odds seemed increasingly stacked against us. Admiral Docker, the Noan fleet is growing stronger, I reported, my voice betraying a hint of concern. What are your orders, sir? Admiral Docker's jaw tightened as he surveyed the tactical display before him. Are the Trojans in position? he asked 
his voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. I nodded, confirming that the Trojans were ready to be deployed. With a determined expression, Admiral Docker gave the order to initiate Operation Trojan Horse. Moments later, the space the Noan fleet occupied lit up with the fiery explosions of four pirate ships, sending shockwaves through the Noan fleet and plunging them into chaos. The sight of the Noan fleet reeling from the devastating blow of the Trojans filled me with a sense of cautious optimism. Admiral Docker, the enemy is in disarray, I reported, my voice tinged with urgency. They flagship along with two-thirds of their fleet have received heavy damage. With a decisive nod, Admiral Docker issued the command to launch our counterattack. Our ships surged forward, weapons blazing as we engaged the enemy in a fierce battle for control of the skies. The clash was fierce, with explosions lighting up the darkness of space as our forces fought valiantly against the Noan onslaught. Despite our best efforts, the battle raged on with no end in sight. The Noan fleet, though battered and reeling, continued to put up a fierce resistance. Admiral Docker, the enemy is showing no signs of backing down, I reported, frustration evident in my voice. They have sustained significant losses, but they have not issued a surrender, nor are they retreating. Admiral Docker's expression hardened as he surveyed the tactical display. We can't afford to let up now, he declared, determination burning in his eyes. Continue the assault. We'll fight until the very end if we have to. With renewed resolve, our fleet pressed forward, determined to emerge victorious no matter the cost. As the battle reached its climax, the known fleet finally began to falter under the relentless onslaught of our forces. Admiral Docker, the known fleet is retreating, I reported, relief flooding through me as I witnessed the tide of battle turning in our favor. The morale fleet are down to only five ships, but they refuse to surrender. With a sense of triumph, Admiral Docker gave the order to pursue the fleeing enemy ships. Our fleet pursued them relentlessly, ensuring that they could not regroup and mount another assault. In the end, the Noan fleet was forced to retreat, leaving the morales to face us alone. Despite our attempts to negotiate their surrender, the morales refused to back down, leading to their ultimate defeat. As we stood on the deck of the Defiance, we viewed with pride the Noan representatives sitting across the table with human alliance officials. The weight of history hung heavy in the air. The negotiations had been tense, but finally, after days of discussions, an agreement had been reached. With a sense of relief, I watched as the representatives from both sides prepared to sign the Runaway Star System Treaty. This treaty would mark a significant step forward in our relations with the Noan government, solidifying our claim to several key star systems in the galaxy. With a steady hand, they signed the treaty on behalf of the Human Alliance government, knowing that it represented a new era of cooperation and peace between our two peoples. As the ink dried on the parchment, I couldn't help but feel a sense of optimism for the future, knowing that we had taken a crucial step towards ensuring the rights and freedoms of all sentient beings in the galaxy. With the treaty signed and sealed, both sides breathed a collective sigh of relief, knowing that we had averted a potential conflict and forged a path towards mutual prosperity. As we shook hands with the Noan representatives, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride in what we had accomplished. The Runaway Star System Treaty would not only ensure the protection of vital star systems, but also pave the way for the liberation of millions of Klopp slaves who had suffered under Noan rule for far too long. As we left the negotiating table, I felt a renewed sense of hope for the future of our galaxy. With the Runaway Star System Treaty in place, we had laid the groundwork for a new era of cooperation and understanding between the Human Alliance and the Noan government. The Noan government recognized the following star systems as Human Alliance Space, Alpha Centauri System, Barnard Star System, Lumen 16 System, and Wolf 359 System. The Noans agreed to stop all mining in those systems and to free all two million Klopp slaves currently living in those systems. 
It was a victory for diplomacy, a victory for peace, and a victory for all those who had fought tirelessly to ensure a brighter future for generations to come.